Good morning, gardeners. It's Thursday, May 6th, and every morning when I wake up, I do a walk around my entire garden to make sure that everything is on the up and up. And when I did my walk around this morning, I noticed something that caught my eye. Why is my beautiful indigo blue beauty tomato plant suddenly drooping? It looks perfectly healthy. What could possibly be the problem? So I started doing some investigation and I started scraping away the soil and the mulch around the tomato plant and this is what I found. Right here you can clearly see there is some kind of borehole in my tomato plant. So clearly it's being attacked by some sort of pest and it's obviously eating the guts out of the tomato plant and that's why it's suddenly weeping. So I need to do a few things to correct this problem. You can also see there's a lot of different insects that are walking around this tomato plant which makes me concerned. I think it's under attack. So in order to correct that, I'm going to take this sharp kitchen knife and I'm going to cut a hole, a little slit inside this tomato plant and peel it away. So in here you can see that something, something's clearly getting into this tomato plant. So right here I have a spray bottle and inside the spray bottle I have water and pyrethrin concentrate. Pyrethrin is a broad spectrum natural insecticide that has been refined down from the chrysanthemum flower and it acts as a nerve toxin to almost all insects. So there's clearly something going on in here and I'm going to absolutely soak down this tomato right here. I want to make sure I drown any kind of attacking insects with this pyrethrin. And this should quickly and effectively kill anything that is living inside, boring a hole inside of this poor, poor, formerly healthy tomato plant. Now that I've soaked down the tomato plant, I want to repair the hole. I want to repair the damage with this, oh look, I have some kind of awful boring worm that's actually crawling out of there, more than probably to die. So clearly this thing is being infested by something. I'll spray it again and I'm going to use this, um, this power film grafting tape. I'm going to take this and I'm going to wrap up the injured section and try to prevent anything else from getting inside there and also hold in the humidity and moisture and hope that this poor, poor, poor tomato plant can recover. All right, now the tomato plant has been patched up with some power film. Uh, I also restaked it with some additional twine and more tomato clips with my trellis. So now I'm going to cover that fragile root structure up with some peat moss and mound the mulch around it because I want to try and encourage the tomato stem to root out above the damage and provide some supplemental roots. So I'm going to water that in. I'm gonna to have to place some more compost and mulch around here and keep this moist constantly to try and rescue this tomato plant because uh, there's a chance that the damage here is already done and it won't be able to be rescued at that point depending on how badly those, those little bugs damage the plant. So let's keep a nice moist mound of peat and mulch around that stem because tomato stems can root out uh, along the sides. They do so very readily. Now the problem is that this is my only indigo blue beauty tomato. So if this does not work for me, I will not have this variety. So I need to hedge my bets and just make the assumption that this tomato is not going to survive. And in order to do that, I'm going to cut off one of these suckers here that is coming out 90 degrees at the nose. This right here is a tomato sucker and I'm going to take this tomato sucker, I'm going to prune off some of the <clears throat> lower foliage right here and I'm left with this little tiny tomato plant. And as I said before, all of these little tiny fine hairs that are growing along this tomato sucker can root when they're kept in constantly moist soil. So I'm going to try to root this right next to my plant and make an exact genetic copy of that plant. Just in case my plant dies, I'll have a backup right here. And this is an incredibly easy thing to do. All I'm going to do is take my finger and dig it into the ground just like this expose the soil and I'm going to take this tomato plant well this tomato sucker rather and I'm just going to bury it so we're going to dig down into the uh, the compost layer and we are going to bury this tomato sucker 
pretty close to up to the top because we want to give the tomato as many uh, as much opportunity as possible to root so the deeper we bury it the more hairs will be uh, exposed to damp soil the better chance it will root so now that is pretty well covered we're going to water that tomato plant in very well and we are going to have to keep this tomato constantly moist constantly so until this tomato roots we'll probably want to come out at least twice a day and check on it and make sure that the tomato plant is kept evenly moist because if it dries out the rooting will fail and now that our tomato sucker has been planted and watered in and the soil is nice and moist we have to protect it from the extreme heat of the sun and also keep it in a moist perfectly humid environment at all times until it roots and that's when you want to use one of these cut in half gallon milk jugs now i've done a video on these in the past using them as mini greenhouses for frost protection but it's also excellent for rooting tomato suckers as well so we're going to place this over the tomato sucker and then we're going to pull our mulch all around the, the, uh, the greenhouse. And we are going to leave this on and then water in the mulch around it. And this will help preserve the humidity. Now right now it is about 67 degrees uh, here and uh, it's supposed to be a very cool day. It's completely overcast. So there is no sun beating on this greenhouse container. So because of that, I'm going to leave this lid on because it's cool and overcast. Now, if it were a warm, sunny day, you have to come out and you have to vent the humidity dome or else it'll, it'll be 100 plus degrees in there and you'll roast your tomato plant. So right now, I'm going to leave the cap on. I'll leave it slightly cracked, just cracked a little bit to let some of the heat escape. But if it's a warm or sunny day, please make sure that you leave the cap off. And every day you're going to have to come out and you're going to have to pour some water inside. Make sure you keep that tomato plant uh, nice and moist at all times. And in about one to two weeks, this tomato sucker should root. So we'll check back in about a week or so. And for the record, you can, you can propagate as many plants as you want, make as many free tomato plants from tomato suckers on your existing plants as you want. As long as the tomato plants are healthy and disease free, you don't want to propagate any tomato plants with any kind of leaf spot or any kind of disease or else you'll be propagating a sick plant. So you can really only do this in the beginning of the season when everything's healthy. So it's Saturday, May 15th. I removed the one gallon milk jug that I've been using as a greenhouse to maintain the humidity on my sucker that I've been trying to root. And I'm happy to announce that the rooted sucker has taken. Uh, it has rooted, it's fully self-sustaining. And in addition, my Indigo Blue Beauty in that time frame has also recovered. So my killing of the pests that bored inside was successful. I'll take you in for a closer look so you can see the results. Here is the rooted sucker that I stuck in the ground. And as you can see, it is flowering. It is happily supporting the flowers. And if I dig around here, you can see that there are very fine tomato hairs right here that are starting to show throughout the soil. Those are all the surface roots of the rooted sucker that is formed along uh, the stem of the tomato. Now they will become full-size tomato roots in time. I'll bring you in for a little bit of a closer look. These hairs that you see right here are the tomato roots. And if I dig around, I'm sure I will be able to find more and more. This is actually a really long tomato root that is forming right here. So this little uh, tomato sucker right now is fully self-sustaining. I perfectly cloned my Indigo Blue Beauty. And now this will be uh, its own self-functioning tomato plant that will give identical fruits to the parent plant that I took the sucker from. And this is the Indigo Blue Beauty parent plant. When I showed it to you originally, there was boar damage in the stem and it was wilting very badly. Now today is a very hot day. It's about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's suffering no wilting at all. And that's because the main stem has recovered. So before the borehole was blocking the transpiration process, which is the process where tomato plants bring water up from their roots and into the top tissues of the plant along the main stem. Now that borehole has clearly uh, healed over and I have no uh, wilting issues. The plant looks very strong. And if I peel away this layer here, I may be able to find a couple of tomato roots um, 
yeah, you can actually see how the tomato has taken root along the main stem right there. Here you can see a whole bunch of roots that actually rooted above the bore damage. And that's a really big deal because the stem down there may be irreparably damaged. However, since the transpiration process is coming up above that damaged part of the stem, these roots are basically superseding the damage and they will become the dominant roots. So we really don't want to, we don't want to push our luck here. We don't want to dig any deeper. We want to keep this tomato plant constantly hilled so those roots stay forever moist and well taken care of. In fact, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to actually hill compost up even higher around this main tomato stem and put on another couple of inches just to try to encourage this main stem to root even more and supplement those new roots that grew below uh, this mulch right here. If you hill them up, that'll give your tomatoes even more roots along the main stem and give you an even better chance at fighting off that injury. And check that out, the plant has formed fruit. You can see it has that beautiful purplish blue tinge that's unique to the indigo blue beauty. There are even more tomatoes that are forming over here. So it looks like that the recovery of this plant is pretty much complete and it will be 100% in no time. And that is how you can propagate tomato suckers to make as many free tomato plants as you want that are exact genetic clones of the mother tomato. And how you can also save the mother tomato plant from insect damage by generating new roots along the stem. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in my garden, they are all linked in my Amazon storefront down in the video description. Thank you all again so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Dale, 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 look at all of these glorious strawberries. There are so many of them. And they are so delicious. Oh, look at this big guy right here, Dale. Oh, they're so good. Let me start it for you. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, buddy, they're so sweet. Are you actually going to eat it this time? You're eating the strawberry. You spit the other one out. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. I was, I thought you were crazy because you like kale but not strawberries. What kind of monster would like kale and not strawberries? Only the Dale monster. You redeemed yourself, buddy.